Hi everyone, I just wanted to uh, say hello real quick while we've got people filing in. Um, I also just wanted to make sure that you can all hear me and see my screen. Um, so I'm just gonna flip through the first couple of slides if you can see that and if you can hear my voice. If you could just type um, yes into the questions box, that would help me out so I know that you can all uh, hear what I'm talking about. All right, looks like we're good on sound and um, sound and visuals. So we'll just give everybody a few more minutes to file in and then we will get started. All right, hello everyone, and thanks for joining me today for our webinar on Giving Day Campaign Strategy for Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday. My name is Linda Gerhardt, and I'm the Senior Community Engagement here, Manager here at Mighty Cause. I've been with the company since 2016, and um, I have helped put on a bunch of Giving Days, so I'm really happy to be here and share everything I know with you. So just to give you a little bit of context about who Mighty Cause is and why we are hosting this webinar, um, we are the new technology partner for Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday. Um, Georgia Gives is hosted on the Mighty, Co Mighty Cause platform this year, and we're also providing technical support to you as you gear up for the big day. So if you have any questions as you're setting up your profile and customizing your page, or if you need to know how to do something, or even if a donor has a question that you're not able to answer, our support team is here to help at support at mightycause.com. Uh, Mighty Cause is a fully functional nonprofit fundraising suite that organizations can use 365 days a year to raise money for their causes. We've been around since 2006, and we're actually one of the first platforms ever to host giving days. So we've been doing this kind of event for a long time, and we're just really super excited to host Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday this year. Here is a look at today's agenda. Um, we'll be reviewing some of the basics for those of you who may have missed previous webinars or just need a little bit of a refresher. And then we're gonna move into giving day strategy so that you can start building your campaign. Um, we're gonna be doing a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Um, we also have Deanna on the line from the Georgia Gives team. Um, and just because we've got a lot to go through today, if you have a question while I'm presenting, just type that into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel and I'll make time for it at the end of the presentation. All right, so with that housekeeping out of the way, uh, we will get into the basics of Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday. The first thing you need to do to, reg to participate in Georgia Gives is to register your nonprofit. Registration is just a short form to fill out. Um, one thing that's very important to know is that before your registration is approved, you must complete the five items on your nonprofit's to-do list, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about in a minute. So if you filled out the registration form but still haven't been approved for the event yet, the reason is most likely that you haven't completed the items on your to-do list. Um, the deadline to register is October 30th first, but we recommend registering as soon as possible so that you can take advantage of all the training and resources being offered to you by the Georgia Gives team, and so that you have plenty of time to customize your page, get comfortable navigating the Mighty Cause platform, and start planning your campaign. Once you've filled out and submitted your registration form, you'll need to complete the items on your to-do list in order for your registration to be approved. This list is located on the welcome screen on your nonprofit profile right under your metrics. So when you log in and you go to your profile, this is the page you'll land on. And your to-do list, as you can see on the slide, is that blue box right beneath all of your metrics. 
Um, there are five basic items to complete. You need to add a background image to your page or use one of our gallery stock background images, upload your logo, which will represent you throughout the Georgia Gives site, add a story, also called your description, that tells your visitors about what your nonprofit organization does, um, build a thank you page to thank your donors, and set up EFT so that you can get your disbursements through direct deposit. If you click the link in your to-do list, and you can see that it's a link because it's underlined, you will be taken directly to the spot on your profile that allows you to complete that task. So it's very easy for you to complete this list. Um, this is a requirement for participating in Georgia Gives, and your registration will not be approved until your to-do list is complete. So before you get into the weeds with campaign planning or start thinking about social media, make sure you take the time to complete this list so your registration can be approved. Um, if you need help or you're unsure of how to complete any of these items or you run into any sort of snafu where you're not able to complete it, let us know at support at mightycause.com. Um, we're here to help you through this process. Um, and you can also check out our support library. We have video walkthroughs and support articles that will walk you through whatever you're trying to accomplish on your page. We also recommend taking some time to get to know your dashboard. Your dashboard, which we like to call your Mighty Cause Manager, is basically your fundraising toolbox for Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday. Your Mighty Cause Manager is the dashboard that appears on the left side of the screen when you're logged in and on your nonprofit's profile. Um, you'll automatically land on your welcome screen or home screen, which is where you'll find your to-do list, as well as some metrics for your nonprofit, which can be really handy when you're in the weeds fundraising for a campaign, and news and updates related to Georgia Gives. Um, as a tip, you can also see on your dashboard, your welcome screen rather, whether or not your registration has been approved. Under profile, you can edit your page in the page editor, adjust your page settings. Um, that's where you can set your goal for Georgia Gives and enable a progress bar on your page. Um, you can also go to a live view to see how your page will look to visitors without actually logging out of your account because that's a little annoying to have to do just to see how your page looks. Below that on your dashboard is the donation section, which is your one-stop shop for everything related to donation management and your checkout process for Georgia Gives. You'll be able to view and export your donation report and just as a tip the view is actually the view actually on the page is limited because we don't have the space to display all of the information we collect about each donation so if you're looking for something in particular like a donor's address or phone number if you opted into collecting those you'll want to export an, a CSV or a spreadsheet that has all of the information that we collected about that transaction so when you go there your donation report is a little bit limited it just gives you a snapshot but you can get the full picture by donating downloading the spreadsheet. Um, you can view and manage your disbursements. So when you get your first deposit, you can check in to see what was included and start balancing your books. Um, and you also have your donor experience section, which we're gonna talk about in a few slides, as well as matching grants, which we're gonna go into a lot of detail about. Um, you can easily view and access any pages that are connected to your nonprofit from the campaign screen. So for instance, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages, and you can manage your nonprofit settings from your settings page, go figure. Your profile is the face of your nonprofit for Georgia Gives, so you'll want to make sure that it looks good and represents you well. Just so you know, this is the link that you'll share with your supporters when you ask them to donate to your organization for Georgia Gives. So to share your page, just copy and paste the URL, and we actually also have a shortened URL you can use that's under your social sharing settings. Um, so as you're going through your to-do list, you'll want to customize your profile to match your brand. Um, you can change your theme color to match your logo, upload media to your gallery, connect your social media accounts to add visual interest to your page, and your story or your description is really the centerpiece of your page. Um, in your story, you can put your mission statement, you can add photos, you can embed video, um, and just as a note about video, you'll need to upload the video first to YouTube or Vimeo, which both offer free accounts, and embed it onto your Mighty Cost page because we're not able to host videos. Um, this spot is really where you can go 
go in depth about your work and make a strong appeal to donors, tell them why your organization needs their support, and show the impact of your work. And also, if you're doing something special for Georgia Gives, talk a little bit about your campaign and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so spend some time customizing this profile because the more work you put into your profile and making sure that it's custom and looks good, the better you will do during Georgia Gives. Um, you can have the best campaign strategy in the world, but if your profile, the page that people actually go and click the donate button on, doesn't look good and it doesn't look like you've shown it any love, you may end up losing donations. One of the really awesome things about Mighty Cause is that your nonprofit has quite a bit of control over the donation process, which is unique among fundraising platforms. Um, from our donor experience tool, which is in the donation section on your dashboard, you can opt into collecting the information you want from donors, so addresses, phone numbers, and so on. You can also set up custom donation amounts and add descriptions to help tie those amounts into items or services that your nonprofit provides and strengthen your appeal to donate. You can also use those custom donation amounts and suggestions to tie it into your overall campaign. Um, donor experience also allows you to preview the whole checkout process without actually making a text test donation. So you can see what your final process looks like and use that to edit yourself if needed. Um, donor experience is also where you'll go to set up your thank you page, which uses the same text editor as the your story on your profile. So you can add text, you can add links, a video or an image, and you can also add a custom call to action or CTA button that tells donors where you'd like them to go next and what you'd like them to do after they've made their donation. So a cool idea for that would be, for instance, asking them to sign up for your email list or sending them to a page on your website. Um, so there's a lot you can do in donor experience um, just to optimize your campaign and customize the checkout process for donors. So we really recommend um, taking some time and getting to know the donor experience tools because they are very important to the whole process of donors for donors on giving, give, uh, Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday and can really help strengthen your campaign. And before we move on to the real meat of this webinar and dive into campaign strategy, I just want to mention that you have access to a really great handy tool that you can use as you get ready for Georgia Gives, and that is the Nonprofit Toolkit. Um, the toolkit was created by the Georgia Gives team, and it has tips and tricks, FAQs, walkthroughs, um, and it also has templates you can use for email and social media to help you get inspired and figure out how to promote your campaign. Um, you'll also be able to find more trainings like this one, including including recordings of webinars that you may have missed, as well as logos and graphics you can download to start tying your brand into the Georgia Gives brand and start promoting your campaign. So if you haven't already done so, definitely check out the toolkit and refer back to it as you're planning your campaign. All right, so now we're gonna move into campaign strategy for Georgia Gives. So one of the best things that you can do to give your nonprofit a head start on fundraising for Georgia Gives is literally to start fundraising early. Um, donations for um, Georgia Gives open up on November 1st, and that means you have more than a month to get some seed donations. Um, these donations help you build momentum and excitement and get some money in the bank that will help you place on the leaderboards on the big day. Um, people you should ask for seed donations are people in your nonprofit's inner circle. So think board members, volunteers, major gift donors, people who give to your nonprofit on a monthly basis. Um, this period can basically act as a soft launch for your campaign. And the benefit to asking people close to your nonprofit is that you can also ask them for feedback about your campaign and also their experience. Um, now, it's important to mention here that these are not pledges or future donations. These are real-time donations that process immediately. Um, but after November 1st, they just count towards your Georgia Gives totals and help you move up on the leaderboard. So today is August 6th and Giving Tuesday is December 3rd. So that gives you about four months until Georgia Gives, which means that it's the perfect time to start thinking about securing a matching grant. Um, a matching grant is essentially a large donation that your nonprofit leverages to bring in other smaller donations by offering it up as a match. For instance, if you had someone who was willing to give you $1,000, instead of just putting that money in the bank and calling it a day, you could use that as a matching grant. 
Um, so the terms of the grant are totally up to you and the grantor. Um, let's say there's an hourly prize available and you'd like to do whatever you can to drive donations during that hour so you can win. You take that $1,000 from that donor and say to your followers, hey, between this time and this time, don donations that are made will be matched up to $1,000, which basically allows people to double their donation. Um, people love a good deal and they love to make their money go further. So a matching grant is basically like a donation BOGO sale. Um, you can do a lot within the Mighty Cause tool, like setting a cap for the donation matching. Say if you wanted to cap it out at $200 so that someone doesn't come in and donate $800 and eat up your entire match. Um, so it's a really cool and complex little tool that allows you to do a lot with the matching grant. And on our platform, we've seen that matching grants, especially on a giving day, can be a really powerful, powerful way to drive donations. Um, so since a matching grant is ultimately just a large donation, you'd want to follow the same process as you would when you're trying to secure a major gift. You prospect, cultivate, and ask. Um, people who you should consider prospects for a matching grant are board members, first, first and foremost. Um, sometimes an individual board member will be interested or happy to provide a matching grant, but one thing you can also consider is asking your board to work together to provide a match, um, especially if your board still has to pay dues for this year, for instance. You could utilize their dues by turning it into a matching grant. Uh, major gift donors who have given large donations to your nonprofit in the past are also good prospects. And providing a matching grant can be a really fun way to liven up their donation so that instead of just writing a check, they're helping your nonprofit grow and driving other donations and getting other people excited about giving to your cause. Um, and you can also give that donor a little extra love on social media and on your Mighty Cause page um, when you're promoting the match. So major gift donors who like a little shout out here and there are even better matching grant gift matching grant prospects um, corporate sponsors are good prospects because again it's a fun proactive way to get them involved in a very public way and draw attention to their philanthropy um, at this stage in the game, you can start making phone calls, setting up uh, calls with people, setting up meetings, and starting to cultivate these prospects by letting them know what you're doing for Georgia Gives and seeing how warm they might be to the idea of getting involved by giving a matching grant. Um, and in the coming months, you can make your ask and just shore up the details of the match. Um, you can have more than one match running at the same time on Mighty Cause. So if you're lucky and you get a lot of really great responses, you don't have to pick and choose just one grantor, you can have multiple running throughout the day. So as I mentioned, the matching grants tool on Mighty Cause is a really versatile little tool, and you have a lot of options for how you structure your match. Um, not all matches have to be one-to-one -one matches, where if someone gives you $20, $20 is matched and so on. Um, you can do two-to-one, three-to-one. You can also match a percentage of each donation. Um, our matching grant tool does the math for you so that all you have to do is choose how you want to structure your match, and we take care of it in our system. You can also apply a match when a certain number of donations have been received. So for instance, if there was a prize available for the most individual donations, you could say that if you get 100 donations within the hour, you'll get an additional $1,000 for your nonprofit, or however much your matching grant is, to help you actually drive donation volume and traffic during that hour so you can win that prize. So to make the most of your grant funding, you you can combine grant matching grants into a larger match. So for instance, if you have a group of like 10 rock star volunteers who are each able and willing to give $100 for a match, you could take their $100 and turn it into a grand. Since a $100 match is not really going to generate a whole lot of excitement or go very far, um, you can also post multiple grants at the same time and also in sequence. So you can set a bunch of grants up so that they fire one after another. Um, and this is all more or less automated through our system. So once you set it up, it's there and these will fire when you set them to. Um, so I don't want to make it sound too complicated or overwhelming. The tool itself is user friendly, but you have a lot of flexibility in how you structure your match. So you can use it strategically to fundraise to the best of your ability on Georgia Gives. Um, now, if you get overwhelmed by the possibilities, just setting it up as a one-to-one -one match is probably the simplest and easiest thing you can do with a matching grant. 
at the end of the day, a matching grant is really just a marketing tool. Um, so in order to make the most of your matching grant, you will need to promote it. So the first step is just going to the matching grant tool on your Georgia Gifts profile and adding it there. Um, there are some marketing tools that are built into the platform for your matching grant, such as putting a sticker on your donate button when the grant is active. And the match also gets listed uh, on your nonprofit profile, which you can see on the slide here. Um, you'll also wanna add some information to your story most likely, especially if it's a big match um, and promote it on your social media channels, send out an email letting people know that the match is available and so on, um, just to let everybody know that it's there and they can get more for their donation during this time. Um, countdowns add urgency, so counting down and sharing your progress can be a great way to get people excited and urge them to just stop what they're doing and make a donation now. So moving on from matching grants, I wanted to talk a little bit about ambassadors. Um, ambassadors are people who are usually in your nonprofit's inner circle um, who can help boost your campaign. So that includes, again, board members, volunteers, especially volunteers who are very highly engaged, staff members, and so on. Um, utilizing ambassadors can help you break out of your existing supporters and engage new people at, because these are all people that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. Um, an ambassador ambassador can help you in a few different ways. They can simply share a link to your profile with their social circle and ask them to donate and help signal boost your campaign for Georgia Gives. Um, if you have a board member, for instance, who's very well connected, um, that can be a huge boost to your campaign. They can also get involved by, getting in, by starting a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising is a fundraising technique where you basically deputize, deputize your biggest supporters to fundraise on your behalf. Um, the Mighty Cause pl platform is actually set up to be as easy as possible for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So this can be a really great way to shake up your campaign and acquire new donors. Um, really, the whole point of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is acquiring new donors because they're asking their social circle, their social network, and these are people that you don't otherwise have access to. Um, so if you wanted to try peer-to-peer, -peer, you would ask your ambassadors to set up a fundraising page for your nonprofit on Mighty Cause for Georgia Gives. Um, this may sound like a big ask. Um, a lot of nonprofits are a little bit shy about asking for this, but often it's a really fun way for you know, your biggest supporters to engage with your nonprofit. It allows them to tell their own story about your nonprofit, how they came to work with you, what their experience with you has been, and why your work is important to them. So it really can be meaningful for them. And this doesn't distract or draw attention from your campaign because they're operating alongside and in coordination with your campaign. And again, they're reaching out to people they know personally for donations. In most cases, they're friends and colleagues and family. And these are not people that your nonprofit has permission to solicit for donations. So you're actually usually picking up new donors, people who may not have even heard of your nonprofit through peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So for people like your board, volunteers, staff, and program alumni, let's not leave them out, this can be a great way for them to get involved without just being asked to give money. And it can make it much more meaningful for them than just making a donation or sharing a link. So it can actually become part of your stewarding process of building and sustaining a relationship with that supporter. Um, we've also seen nonprofits get some really great peer-to-peer -peer action going just by inviting people on social media or sending them an email asking for their help. Um, we've also seen contests like the first 10 people who start a fundraiser and raise 100 bucks and get a t-shirt from us. We've seen that. Um, so young, for younger people who have a big social network and a lot of internet know-how and are really comfortable doing this sort of thing, but maybe don't have a whole lot of cash to give on their own, this can be an excellent way for them to get involved and help out and make a meaningful contribution. So I get asked a lot about how we can engage millennial audiences, and this is a really great way to do that. To help make things easier for them, you can share some images, talking points, facts about your organization, your work, and logos with them, or even offer to get in there and help them set up their page, since at this point you should all be pretty comfortable on the platform, or will be when you ask them to start a fundraiser for you. Um, 
peer, nonprofits that utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tend to raise more money on giving days, um, most likely just because they have more boots on the ground. They have more links out there. They're getting more traffic and getting more clicks. So it's definitely worth talking about how you can incorporate peer-to-peer -peer into your campaign strategy. Um, right now, the timeline is great for you to get started on this. So come late September and October, you can start making those asks and getting people set up with fundraisers on the platform so they can begin raising money on November 1st. If you manage to men generate a lot of interest in peer-to-peer -peer, or you've done peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for Georgia Gifts in the past and you want to try something new, you want to shake it up, um, you can consider trying out team or event fundraising. Um, teams and events can be great for groups of people who want to fundraise together, like again, your board, um, companies, or just volunteer groups. Sometimes people are friends and they want to work together to raise money. Um, teams and events can be a great way to get people working together as a united front for your cause. And because they all have their own leaderboards where they're tracking how much they've raised, it can help inspire some friendly competition to help keep them motivated to fundraise. Um, the difference between teams and events is basically that an event allows individuals and groups of people to participate together on the same page, um, while a team fundraiser is a group of individuals working together toward their collective goal. Um, so it either can work for you if you're looking for something a little more simple, a team can work if you want something a little bit more complex, um, event fundraising is probably the right choice. Um, now the cool thing about using Teams or event products for a giving day is that there are tools built in that make managing it much easier. Um, for instance, you can create a template fundraiser that people can use to get set up more quickly, and that allows you to pre-fill some sections of their page. And you can email team and event members through the platform to keep them motivated or ask them questions about their page or help them out. Um, so these are essentially just more complex peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. They, have, they add some additional interest and competition. And they can be a really great way to up the ante if you've already done peer-to-peer -peer fundraising in the past and you want to go a little bit further with it. Um, or if you, you know, just want to try something new and you get a lot of interest in doing peer-to-peer. All right, so your email list, um, unsurprisingly, is going to be one of your most important tools on Georgia Gives because emails are a direct line to your supporters. Um, unlike social media, you don't have to worry about an algorithm getting in your way or preventing people from seeing what you're, you're sending them because unless they've unsubscribed, it'll end up right in their inbox and probably notify them on their phone um, so that they are prompted to read the email. Um, so I just want to talk for a little bit about email strategy because this is going to be important for Georgia Gives on Giving Tuesday. Um, in general, you'll want to keep emails relatively short, simple, and skimmable. Um, most people read their, e their emails on their phone these days, so they're not going to sit down and read a novel. They want to be able to scroll through it really easily and get to the point. Um, people are much more likely to read emails that uh, pertain directly to them. So we highly recommend segmenting your email list by sorting donors into a few key groups. Um, donors who have given a lot on a regular basis, one-time donors, people who've utilized your services but have never donated, one-time donors, your board, your volunteers, and so on. Um, you don't need to craft entirely new emails to each of these groups, but you can tweak small things about the emails for each group to make it personal. For instance, in an email to volunteers, you want to acknowledge how they already help your nonprofit, all the work they put in, all the hours they put in. And, you know, you wouldn't want to send an email to a major gift owner asking for a $25 donation. That makes it look like you don't know who they are or what they've given to your nonprofit. So identify your key segments and figure out how to, how to tailor your message directly to them. When an email is tailored to who the recipient is and the relationship that they have with your organization, they are much more likely to take the time to read it and, and click on the links and take action on it. Um, how you segment um, in your, the program depends on what you're using, but most services like Constant Contact and MailChimp use a tagging system to segment groups of people on your list. So you may actually need to do a little bit of sorting um, of spreadsheets if you haven't already done that, or you just do a little bit of sorting in whatever program you're using, but it should be fairly easy because most programs are set up to easily segment lists.
Um, one thing you'll want to pay close attention to is the timing of your emails, especially if you're aiming to win an hourly prize, for instance. If you send it too late, um, it doesn't really help you if you're trying to win an hourly prize. So I would recommend taking the time to schedule as much as you can beforehand, um, starting as soon as prizes are announced, and have a template email ready for things that you need to send out on the day of, like a blast email helping you to get you know, to your goal if you're very close or announcing that you've won a prize and so on. Um, as I mentioned before, most people read their email on their phone these days, so uh, make sure that you choose a mobile-friendly email template and test it out beforehand. Um, try it on an iPhone, try it on somebody who has a Droid, and just make sure that it looks the way you want it to look. Um, leading up to the event, something that can also be really helpful is condu conducting some A B testing, um, especially with subject lines, because you'll want to make sure that people are driven to open your emails for Georgia Gives. So try out different subject line formats, um, add different variables to the mix. Um, you can try things like adding emojis um, and see what works better for you so that when you're sending out these really critical emails, you'll have an idea of what tends to work with that email list. Um, A-B testing, if you're new to that term, is basically splitting an email up 50-50. You're splitting up the audience. Um, so let's say you're testing a button color or a subject line. Um, half your list gets email A with one subject line and the other half gets email B with another subject line. And whichever email gets the most opens wins. So you know that that particular winning email, whatever you did in that subject line, got a better response. For the button color placement, the email with the most click clicks would win because obviously in a button you're trying to get them to click. Um, you just want to be careful about testing too much in one test. Um, when you throw too many variables in there, it's really hard to know what actually drove people to do the thing you wanted them to do and say which one performed better. Um, so lastly, your calls to action or your CTAs in your emails should be clear and action oriented. So give now, donate now, help us today. Um, e uh, CTAs that are more on the passive side, like thanks for donating or please contribute, generally are not as effective. You want to be as crystal clear and urgent as you can um, in your CTAs. So a few months ago, I did a whole webinar on social media strategy. So I don't want to go too far into the weeds here since there's an hour's worth of content you can watch to dive deep into social media for Georgia Gifts. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, if you really want to get deep in here and learn about social media strategy, I'd really recommend checking out the recording of the webinar, which will be available on the Georgia Gifts website. Um, but obviously, social media needs to be part of your campaign strategy because social media is built into the fabric of Giving Tuesday. It is an online day. Georgia Gives is on Giving Tuesday, so it's important to be active on social media. Um, and for a high stakes day like this, we really recommend staying in your comfort zone and going where your audience is. And what I mean by that is that if you have never logged into TikTok before in your whole entire life, you don't need to use it on Georgia Gives. If you have 1,000 followers on your Facebook page and you only have a handful on Instagram, then you should spend way more time and effort promoting your campaign on Facebook than Instagram. That's not to say you should ignore Instagram, but you want to spend the most time and effort where the the biggest audience is. So stay in your lane and put your efforts into the platforms where you're most likely to have a reach and an impact. Um, I definitely recommend scheduling any posts you can ahead of time just to save yourself trouble on December 3rd and leading up to it. Get your key content scheduled with, scheduled with Facebook's publishing tools. Um, they've also switched to their creator studio so you can use that to schedule posts. Um, go into TweetDeck, um, which is a free tool provided by Twitter, and schedule your tweets. Um, and save any live posting for stuff that needs to be done on the day of, like thanking a donor, interacting with somebody, updates on your progress, prize announcements, and so on. Um, we also recommend using the Georgia Gives and Giving Tuesday hashtags on social media so you can see what's going on and start interacting with donors and other nonprofits. Um, to that end, I also recommend assigning a point person to monitor social media. And that's so you can quickly respond to comments and interact with your followers since that's 
important on social media and interaction can also help you with the algorithm since most platforms do show priority to posts that have lots of engagement. So if you get comments and you respond to them and you like them, you're improving your engagement and you'll, you're more likely to be seen by people following you. And we do recommend um, budgeting a little bit of money if you're able to boost some posts or promote some tweets. And on social media, 20 bucks for an ad can actually really go a long way. Um, you'll just want to make sure that your ad is targeted properly. And if you aren't sure how to target an ad, you can always just default to targeting the people who like your page or already follow you. Um, that's an easy thing you can do and it's hard to mess up. Um, in terms of type of the type of content that will do well on social media. Um, we talked a lot about this on the, the social media webinar, so I would take a look at that. But in general, photos and videos do really well, and you may wanna consider doing something a little out of the box, like a Facebook Live video or a watch party for a campaign video to help generate some buzz while delivering some content that's friendly to the algorithm. But again, this is something we went into very deeply in the social media webinar, so check that out if you're looking for more guidance when it comes to social media. Another thing you'll want to incorporate into your plan for Georgia Gives is donor retention. Um, people who have given to past Georgia Gives campaigns are low-hanging fruit. So you'll want to make sure you've got a plan in place to reach out to them. With donors who have given in the past, you'll want to work on securing their gift again this year, but also increasing their gift. Um, depending on the donor, some personalized outreach may be in order and be more effective, especially to people who've given over a certain amount with maybe a more uh, general blast approach to people who've given a little bit less, but take a look at your numbers, see what you did last year, and make a plan that makes sense for your nonprofit. Um, you can actually pull a list of last year's donors right from your Mighty Cause page on your welcome screen, um, so you can easily see who gave last year and then use that tool to track this year's uh, donor retention as well. And finally, when you're planning your campaign, follow-up is very important to consider. Um, when you're planning your content, you'll also want to plan your thank you to donors. Things like making a video um, of your staff saying thank you or a photo of your staff can be really great for this. Um, be sure to talk about the impact of the funds you raised and close the loop on your campaign. Um, and that means especially if you're fundraising for something specific, like a new piece of equipment or improvements to your building or something along those lines, you'll also want to send emails and let donors know periodically how you're doing toward that goal. Um, you'll want to make sure you've got an onboarding plan in place for new donors so that they come back to donate again. Um, if you collect addresses, mailing them a welcome packet can be a really great way to get them onboarded. And you can also create an automated email journey where they can get a series of emails with more information about what you do and further enmeshing them into your donor pool. Um, and you'll want to think about how to integrate your Georgia Gives donors into your end of year plan. Um, you want to be careful not to fatigue them with a bunch of asks right after another, um, but be sure to loop them into that end of year plan as well and integrate them into your year round fundraising plan. All right, so uh, we're just about done with the presentation. Um, I did want to make some time for questions. Um, if you have a question, just type it into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel, um, and I'll stay on as long as needed to answer all of your questions. Um, okay, it looks like we've got one. What is your suggestion for the first-time fundraiser? Um, I'm not sure if that's, do you mean peer-to-peer -peer or nonprofit? Um, for nonprofits, who are fundraising for Georgia Gives for the very first time, I really recommend doing stuff that's comfortable for your nonprofit. So setting up your profile, those are really easy wins. Make your profile page look great. Um, get an email plan together. Get a social media plan together. Peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising is great if you think you have the capacity for it, but if you do not have the capacity for it, um, don't worry about that if it's your first year. Um, just you know, try running a campaign with your base of donors and you can grow each year on Giving Tuesday with Georgia Gives. So um, do what's right for your nonprofit. Don't feel like you have to do any Thing in particular, peer to peer fundraising is great, but it is a little bit more advanced. You may want to have one peer to peer campaign if you have like a really awesome board member who's willing to try it out just to help you boost your campaign. But um, just do what you're comfortable with, do what you can, um, and then each year just try to grow on that success. Um, but if it's your first time, just focus on you know things that have worked for you in the past. So look at the last fundraising campaign you 
did, what worked for you with that campaign, what didn't work for you with that campaign, and just go from there um, and have fun with it. You know, it's uh, it's supposed to be a fun day. Giving Tuesday in general is one of my favorite days of the year. There's so much philanthropy going on, um, and you don't need to feel pressure to uh, raise lots of money or compete. Just you know, go in do your best um, and you know we're here to help you so if you need any assistance at Mighty Cause uh, just email us we're happy to chat through your campaign with you help you with anything you need on your page um, but yeah it, it just depends on how your nonprofit works and what has worked for you in the past um, I'm a fan of sticking with what is comfortable when something is new so uh, just look at what has worked for you in the past and go from there all right, we've got a lot of questions, so I'm glad I left a lot of time. Um, so what are, what are your suggestions for how to incorporate Georgia Gives into an end of year campaign? You're worried about donor fatigue. Everybody's worried about donor fatigue. Um, so the, the good news is that donor fatigue is something that we get very scared about, but at the end of the year, um, it's not as big of a deal as you might think. Um, as long as you're thanking your donors, if as long as you're acknowledging what they've given to your nonprofit, and you're not just sending them ask after ask without closing the loop on the last time they gave, they should be fine. They will give what they are able to give. Um, so it's really more about how you do it. So when somebody gives to your Georgia Gives campaign and you're targeting them for your end of year campaign, acknowledge the fact that they gave to you during Georgia Gives. Thank them again for their gift and use language like we know we can count on you because you donated to Georgia Gives and you helped us raise an incredible amount of money for our cause. So flattery will get you everywhere. Um, and in general, people are not going to give what they can't give. So if they can't give, they won't click on the email. But the end of the year is the time when a lot of people just expect to give to charity and they're expecting to get hit with emails. So just be conscientious. Um, definitely e e segmenting your emails um, is a great strategy. Um, you know, that way you can keep track of, okay, we're not just blasting this email to everybody. That way you can take the time to acknowledge, okay, this person gave to Georgia Gives and we don't want to hit them with another ask for a large amount of money. You can wrap your another acknowledgement of their gift in into your next email, as long as you're just not hitting them blankly with ask after ask after ask without acknowledging that they've given to you before, you should be fine. Um, end of year is kind of a free for all. You don't need to be too concerned about donor fatigue. And I would treat your end of year campaign as sort of a uh, an extension of your 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 end of ca your campaign is an extension of your Georgia Gives campaign. Just move seamlessly into the other. Um, you can definitely have different messaging, but you know, just move one in from one to the other. Don't you know treat you know Georgia Gives ending as a hard stop. Just steward those donors into your end of year campaign. Acknowledge that they've given to you before. Thank them again. Flatter them. That will get you everywhere. So I hope that helps. All right, so what do you recommend as focus areas for new nonprofits participating in their first Georgia Gives? Um, so this seems to be a good uh, topic uh, for um, people who are participating for the first time. I recommend just sticking with what you know. Um, so look at your last campaigns, go through your notes, see what you did, see what brought in the most number of donations or the most amount of donations um, and do what worked, do what people responded to, go through your social media posts, see what worked for you, what kind of content got people um, responding to you um, and just stay in your, your lane, stay in your comfort zone. Um, don't be afraid to try new things if you wanted to try peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and you've never done it before give it a try, um, but just go in, um, stick with what you know, stick with what has worked for you in the past, um, and definitely planning, organizing, um, giving days in general, they're a lot of fun. They can also be a lot of work. So the more you do to plan ahead of time and get your ducks in a row will help you out on the giving day itself. So schedule those posts, schedule those emails, get your plan down pat, get your point people in place so that when December 3rd hits, you're going to be busy, you're going to have donations happening, there's going to be a lot of activity. You have things that are set to fire when you want them to fire. You're not running around. Um, that's, I think, something that a lot of nonprofits, when they're new to a particular giving day, can fall into, um, is just sort of panic and being reactive. So being strategic and being um, on top of things 
is something that I definitely recommend for people who are participating in a giving event for the first time. Do yourself a favor, get your plan in place, um, and get everything in place for the big day. All right. So, oh, somebody wants to know if there's um, where they can learn more about the Mighty Cause platform. Um, if you go to mightycause.com, you can sort of see the platform away from Georgia Gives, um, and you can see the features that we have available. The whole platform is available to, to you guys participating in Georgia Gives, so we're not hiding anything from you. But if you have something specific that you'd like to know more about, you can always email our support staff if there's a feature or functionality you're looking for. Um, just send us an email and uh, we will we'll help you out. A great presentation, thank you very much. Is there a hard copy available? Yes, so you will have the recording available to you and um, I will also just send the slide deck to the George Gifts team so that we can make that available to you too. All right, um, any suggestions for getting older volunteers active with the social media and digital aspect of fundraising? Most of our volunteers struggle with anything that requires a login. So this is actually something that comes up a lot for each giving day. Um, people are concerned that their volunteers will get lost um, you know, in Mighty Cause or on an online platform and won't know what to do. And definitely, you know, for anybody, regardless of their age on a new platform there's a little bit of a learning curve um i would say first of all don't make assumptions about your volunteers based on their age if they have trouble logging into you know your volunteer management program that's one issue but the thing is people who are older a little bit older are very active on social media facebook's biggest users are women i think age like 50 to 65 they're extremely active on facebook they're all over social media um so Number one, don't make assumptions about them. They may actually be more adept than you think. Um, and the other thing you can do is just sort of set them up for success. Um, come up with a little one pager um, where you say, hey, here are the five steps or however many steps it is to create an account on the Georgia Gives portal and set up your fundraiser. It's very easy. Um, let them know that the Mighty Cause staff is here to help them out and assist them. So if they have a question, if they need to get on the phone with somebody, we're here to do that so that you don't have to. Um, so just you know, go through the process yourself, see what it's like, write out instructions for them. We have a whole support library available to you so you can also check that out um, and you know, see if there's anything there that you can share with them upfront. Um, but I would say just try not to make too many assumptions because uh, people, um, you know, seniors are on social media. They're using the internet. They are um, more connected than you think. Um, you just need to set them up for success and try to do some work up front to make it seem easy and accessible to them. Um, but yeah, it's mostly just a, a matter of asking if you have regular volunteer meetings, having uh, someone from your staff or a volunteer who kind of knows the platform a little bit better, show people how to do it or actually help them get set up on the platform is a really great, great, great way to get more people signed up, more people involved, and also fills up time at those volunteer meetings. It's kind of, it kind of shakes things up. So that might be a good way to handle it. Okay, so will there be additional webinars check-ins until the event to see if our Georgia Gives campaigns are looking good, what we need to change, et cetera? It'd be nice to have some quick status check-ins. Um, Deanna, I don't know if you're on the line. That might be a great question for you to answer. Um, so if you're Can you there, hear me? So yes, I can hear you. Hello? Hey guys. Um, yes, we will be um, rolling out some additional um, webinars. Um, and also, if there's anything that we can help you with directly, you know, do not hesitate to um, reach out. But we are planning and actually I'm taking notes based on um, the questions that are asked um, today to help us um, kind of decide what those webinars um, are in the future. But stay tuned. Um, we'll be sending out an email this week um, with some additional, um, you know, information. And like I said, we are here to help you guys in any way we can. But we will be doing some webinars um, between now and October 1st, um, as well as between now and December 3rd. Awesome. And again, don't be afraid to reach out to Mighty Cause um, if you have questions like, is there anything else I can do with my page? We're happy to take a look at your page. We see a million pages a week here. So we're happy to tell you, oh, hey, you've missed filling out this section. You can do that and that'll make your page look better. Um, so we're here. 
use us, um, you know, you can email me if you have any questions as well, um, if you wanted to get a hold of me directly, but our support staff, um, they see a ton of pages, they see really amazing ones, and they see ones that need a little bit more help. So if you have a question, um, you know, sort of if you're just working on the page and you just want to know what am, what am I doing right, what am I doing wrong, you can also email us. We're here. We're here to help you. Um, let me see if there's anything else. I think that is it for this um, webinar. I don't see any more questions coming in. So um, thank you guys so much for uh, joining me for this webinar. Again, you can feel free to reach out to us at support at mightycost.com. If you have anything you need assistance with, we are here to help. Um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks for popping on to the webinar, Deanna. Thanks guys.